Hello and welcome to Little Pi. In today's video, I will be doing a basic Wireshark tutorial. Wireshark is a free to download network scanner and packet sniffer available to download from Wireshark.org. I'll assume you already have it. Um, and if you don't, I'll have a link in the description. Uh, in today's video, I'll be explaining how to use it, what you can do with it, and, real, and a real world example of how it can be used. Once you've opened Wireshark, you'll be greeted by this screen, and this screen shows you the different adapters that Wireshark is detecting on your device. So, uh, picking the adapter can sometimes be a little bit tricky. As you can see, there are packets coming from this address and this address, but uh, one easy way to tell is to Google something, look something up, just use the internet, and when you see a spike in uh, packet captures, packets going by, on one of the adapters, you know that that's the one. Uh, keep in mind, if you have a Wi-Fi adapter and an Ethernet adapter, if you're using multiple uh, networks, you'll want to just pick one, as you can only do really one at a time. Uh, but in my case, this is Ethernet 5, which is correct. Just make sure that it is the device you're using. And uh, this adapter for loopback traffic is an adapter for loopback traffic. Even though it does show data, it isn't a capturing device for seeing both ingoing, outgoing and incoming. Um, so I'm just going to yeah, open up Ethernet 5 and once you open it up you'll see quite a bit of data coming through. Now this is easily filled up so once you feel like you've got enough data, which at this point we don't, but I will mention you can go stop and it will stop capturing the data but we'll still keep it here. Um, and while we're here at the stop, you'll notice the time here. When you download it you'll be greeted by time displayed as time since beginning of capture like this so starting at obviously zero and heading down to we had a capturing for 11 seconds but I personally prefer the time itself time of day um, it just makes it easier for me because I will check what time exactly I ran a request or did something so I'll see exactly where the data is because it sometimes does get a bit confusing um, you can also do uh, filters to find out what you want so you can go here and here's the different uh, options for filtering I personally use this one because that lets you pump in any IP address and show you this is the router um, and it will show you uh, just information from that and then hit X and you might have to hit enter and then you'll be greeted with the main screen again so I'll restart packet capture and I won't save uh, so it's going to continue in the adapter we started before. Now in this case, I want to show you a real-world example already, and then we'll get back to the user interface. Uh, so, Telnet is insecure. I'll just say this right off the start. Do not enable Telnet for too long. It's terrible, and as you will see how terrible it is later on. So, in this case, I want to see if I can get into my router. So I'll bring up MOBA Xterm. I'll open up, here we go, so we begin at 8.26, so now I'll type in admin and the password for my Wi-Fi router, boom, I'm in. You can do different commands, <laughs> you could do different commands, whatever you want, like it's a Linux terminal, right, um, and you're already in root. So with that, I will now go back to Wireshark and stop. And now I'll look for Telnet data. I can either look for it, and click on protocol to sort it by, or just type in Telnet, and it can autocorrect to what you want. Hit enter, and here we have the start of Telnet data. So then you can right click, follow, TCP stream. Here you go. It looks a bit confusing, so you can actually numb it down to this, which is the uh, outgoing packet. So here we have it asking for the password which you got the received of admin and you won't see the password there but if we switch to other packets you'll see I entered the username admin entered the password the admin password because that's a secure and then I entered list change directory and shut down I didn't hit enter enter will be registered as enter it's a click but that's just an example of why telnet is definitely not to be used anymore because it can easily be sniffed from anyone sitting on the network so, yeah, don't use Telnet anymore, but that is just something you can do with Wireshark if you want to test if it's all working and can follow packets. 
then you can enable Telnet on your router and or another device and try to get into it but it was just easier to do it on my router in this case so once you're done with that just close out of that and you can remove the filter if you so choose now if you come back here you're back to all the data and most of it will be gibberish so you follow UDP stream in this case and it's gibberish mostly because it's encrypted because the internet is unsafe now and you want everything to be encrypted you'll also find uh, quite a few different devices like printers uh, calling and router advertisements you'll see who has advertisements going back acknowledgements that's ACK by the way acknowledge um, here's telnet data again notify you can't really do much with those again you just get information like this which I guess is helpful to some but I wasn't looking for it so I don't need it um, I'll go back to the viewport now you can do statistics that's one thing but in my case I want to go view and time and do time since previous um, captured packet which is very helpful for seeing how long between commands it is and usually it's quite small it is, I don't think we're going to get a one at all on the left side yeah, not even a single one when it looks at things um, but that's how some of the different view things work you can I'll explain these now actually so this is the number of packets captured so it starts at zero I believe and goes to or it's not going to do anything um, it starts at zero goes to however many packets were captured um, yeah sorry starts at one whoops um, and in my case goes to 625 that's pretty straightforward now the time obviously I just explained you can change the time going to view time display format and pick whichever one you want you can also display seconds a thousand minutes and then the source is the source IP address. You can sort by IP address. Um, not too much there. And destination, obviously, is destination IP address. Um, in my case, all of these seem to be IPv4, well, except for a few. So uh, you can sort by IPv6, IPv6. There we go. Here, only IPv6. So I have a few, not many. Uh, this sort feature. It's good to get to know it because you'll be using it a lot. You can manage display filters um, and a lot of information down here. So you click on this and it will automatically put in the information like that. And you can just change that to see what you want to see. Um, and then protocol obviously tells you the protocol TCP, UDP, HTTPS, blah, blah, blah. Um, obviously, HTTPS, you can't really sniff it out very well because it is encrypted, as it should be. Length is the length of the packets. If you click on the packet, let's just pick a Telnet one again. Let's just stay with that. Go to Telnet packet. If you click on it and drag up from here, you get information. So I can also yeah, do echo, do negotiate about window size, will echo, will echo, go suppress, blah, blah, blah. And then here's the actual raw information. But you get information on the frame, the Ethernet, the IPv, uh, TCP, all that fun stuff uh, that you can find. You can also use specific packets while following. Follow, and then you can find, you can click on where you want. So let's go to password. Boom, clicked on the password one, and as it shows me, it's this one. So if I was to click on this, and it was to decrypt it, and what not, uh, you would see there's a lot of information that comes out, see M and then probably before that will be another letter and here's the acknowledgement by the way and then this one is, what letter is this? D admin, perfect so as you can see it's sent letter by letter but uh, that is what this information is down here, it changes depending on the packet obviously um, and then you can also save as a file, I forget what it was called, I think it's PCAP, um, but that is Wireshark data, so you can save this and uh, you'll be good to come back to it to do some more investigation, because you do fill up with data, it does fill up with data quite quickly, um, and obviously other devices, Google Homes, Google Chromecast, they all can be heard on the network, so this is sort of a basic one, I might do a few more in the future, we'll See if I can get a little bit more advanced with uh, trying to do some decryption on some packets. Uh, 
So this is Letter Pie. Thank you for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing if you can. It's great. Uh, and I uh, hope you have a good one.